What's going on, guys? Oh, look at the big red light. Yeah, dude. That's dope. If you push, if you move this back and forth and up and down, it'll move the camera. What's up? Look at that, that pan, that smooth <laughs> pan. So nice. We're using our new camera tonight. And our new like okay. gimbal setting, <laughs> and the new mic, and the new camera cameraman boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is exciting. This is exciting. Um, we are going to do the turbo oil drain and feed tonight on my little Garrett T25. We already have a fitting here, but we're going to show you where you tap on the block to get the um, the oil feed. And we got to do something with this drain. We got flat spots here, so it won't take a uh, a normal two bolt flange but we're gonna make it so that it does we're gonna drill this out and then we're gonna get a flange and drill that out and make a match and uh, show you all what we're gonna do about the pan we've got a really cool little like, kind of do-it-yourself without a fabricator type thing for the pan so we'll show you how we're gonna do that what else are we doing now finish up the exhaust yep we're gonna finish up the exhaust we got a, we did an exhaust video which you all probably saw but we didn't hang it yet, so we got to put hangers on it. We got some hangers, and, and we'll uh, put this into, while we're in it. and we'll put in the O2 bomb, dude. Since we're welding, yeah, convenient because we have a welder. Maybe uh, finish up the air cooler packing. It's so weird that we're both in this shot. Look at us, we're both in this <laughs> shot because we have a cameraman boy. <laughs> cameraman boy, man. <laughs> this is Derek. Look at this. This is Derek. He's, He's much there. bigger than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. This is Derek. Say what's up. What's up? He has a dope STI. Mm -hmm. It's got freaking Rezax on it that are super cool. I'm going to hand this back to him. It's on the channel from like two years ago. Dude, it is on the channel. In a couple of videos. Like one, two, three, at least three videos. Yeah, I, don't I know. think it's four. Is it four videos? Yeah. You keep track, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was your, your brush with brush with greatness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same spot. The which, is funny, which is funny because he has way more followers on his Instagram than we do. And if he had a YouTube channel, yeah. channel, yeah, probably. Dang, probably. He hasn't posted anything in like a year. <laughs> like, I don't know, dude. It's crazy. Anyway, we'll be back to you in a second. Should we use the what? The multi bit? What's the multi? The step bit? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you were serious for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. You want to get this shit done? Hey, what's up? So we're using this right here. I got it off of like Amazon or eBay or something like that. But it's basically just like, normally it's supposed to bolt on to a two bolt flange just right here, pow, like this. But like I showed you before, ours is slick. So we got to make holes. Luckily, we went to the Harbor Freight and we got a whole tap and die set. We are not sponsored by Harbor Freight, but you yep. get all their stuff anyways. anyways. Whole tap and die set. How much is it? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. It was probably cheap because it's hard to freight. Anyways, so we're just going to tap these out and see if we can get this on without any kind of failure. Yeah, without any kind of complication. All right, let me get some. Ronnie just said that this is surprisingly easy, which means that it's about to explode. Oh, he's going. I'm Is just it? trying to make sure that I'm like straight up and down and all that stuff. Can I see here? You pointed at it? <laughs> yeah, I can point it at it. We're still getting used to our new like little gimbal setup. Cool, cool. So, let me turn this. There we go. So, we're using our new gimbal setup and our new camera. So, let us know in the comments if you like it. We also got a new mic. We got a, like a external mic for the camera so you can hear us better. So let us know if the sound is better, if the image quality is better, if the movement's better, no shakiness, stuff like that. Give us comments because that's uh, how we improve. Back to, whoa. <laughs> Back to Ronnie. Back to Ronnie. I know, that's weird, huh? Feel this. It's not hot at all. That's super weird. And I'm already done. I mean, like, I'm pretty okay. deep into this side. What happened? It just broke. So I'm selling this chart, but why would I buy the chart when I can just look at it <laughs> on the internet? What broke? The drill bit. Where did the drill bit break? What do you mean, where did it break? Where did it break? In the fucking hole. <laughs> what are you talking about? The bit broke off in the hole? Yeah, but it just like, oh, it, it wasn't even off. in there. Interesting. Uh, Is that the other thing? I don't know. Harbor break. 
fetch for me, Mitch. She's not already over there. I think so. Well, I don't know. Dude, that looks freaking factory to me. My goodness. Ronnie's Turbo Shop, right here. <laughs> no. Everybody send your turbos to Ronnie to get rebuilt, redrilled, whatever you need. Nope. Look at him. Look at him. Look how competent he is. Don't do that. <laughs> should, we, should we grab the other turbo that Ronnie's dealt with? <laughs> Did he mess one up? Let me go grab it. I didn't mess uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Let's see what Derek brings back. I'm thinking mm. it's not gonna be good, Ronnie. It's not messed up. I'm thinking it's up. not gonna be good. It's pretty funny though. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? So, uh, you know the servo that was on the Forcer? Yes. Watch this. Oh, dang. This is funny. What is it? Bro? I've never seen this happen. So, I promise you, I'm spinning to the other side. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's not turning. <laughs> <laughs> so, some shaft issues. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That sounds good. Zero shaft play, yo. 300 bucks. <laughs> We're recording this because I'm about to break this tap off inside this hole. Ronnie did like the first like four or five threads, but uh, oh man, that's so tight. That's so you. scary. <laughs> it's tight as shit. I feel it cutting though. It's cutting. I know, but it's scary. Oh, it's not terrible. It's actually getting better. Snap. <laughs> it's actually getting better. <laughs> Pow! Yeah, that works. All right, now we're going back out. <laughs> a little bit tighter than I'm comfortable with. How often do you say that? Yeah. <laughs> Is that YouTube safe? Is that YouTube yeah. friendly? Yeah. Wow. Let's see if this thing goes in here. This one's over here. It's going, slowly but surely. Just got to keep cutting threads. We're going to stay at it, but if this thing breaks, we'll let you know. It's important. I don't know if you ever tapped anything before. It's important when you tap stuff, you go slow. Because um, most guides on the internet, they have you drill the hole out, obviously a little bit smaller than it's supposed to be, so you can actually cut thread. So you have some meat to cut the threads out of. But man, it is sketchy. Likely story, though. <laughs> I'm going to blame this all on you. <laughs> Although it's doing pretty good. So far. So far. Our cameraman left. Our cameraman left. Um, you think Lucky would want to be the cameraman? Hey, Lucky, you want to be the cameraman? I don't think Lucky wants to be the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got our holes uh, drilled and tapped. Uh, we're going to put this this slip on, drain on, right here. Look at how fast should... this thing auto focuses. Watch. So, like, My focused face. on you. Ready? That's pretty good. <laughs> We're liking the new camera, oh, by the way. Let's see, that goes that way. This is going to have to go like this. Yeah, Probably this way. Let's see if we can get this thing on real quick. Can we line up our holes? More or less. <laughs> I think we got them lined up enough, which is what's important. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wrong way. Okay. Does it seem like the up and down is inverted to you on the camera, or is it not? Or it does to me because we're used to playing like PlayStation and using that little using the joysticks yeah. there, and this one seems kind of weird. Yep, we should get <laughs> Garrett Morris to do it and see what he thinks because he plays inverted. He plays inverted. Yep. What kind of weirdo plays inverted? <laughs> I don't know. Garrett Morris. <laughs> if y'all play inverted on your PlayStation joysticks, you're weirdos, man. <laughs> Comment down below and let us know <laughs> how you guys play games. We're gonna have a lot of inverted or not. <laughs> We're gonna have people comment and all kinds of weird stuff, and we'll be like, "What did we ask during this video?" <laughs> that, that happens a lot. Yeah, it does. Because we ask some weird stuff, but whatever. And we forget. <laughs> yeah, we definitely forget. That's pretty good. Dang. I like that. Boom, boom. Nice. So that's what we're doing for the drain. It's just like slip on. I'm guessing this is what five eighths. You think five eighths? Oh, good size. Yeah, good size. It's it's enough. <laughs> that's what enough size, size it is. Big enough. All right. So um, we need to put the one in the oil pan. Yep. Let's do that. So we need to drain the oil. Oh god, going the wrong way. <laughs> we got to drain the oil and. Um, Drop the pan, drop the cross member, 
and then we can go ahead and drill the hole and screw this one in, which is, it's, it's pretty dope, this little contraption that Bo got. That way you don't have to have a welder or use JB Weld like yeah, I did at first. Yeah, I think I showed it to him in the other video, but this is it right here. Okay. I'm going to set it right here. If you want. Okay, it's got these two nuts right here. Like most of you, it has the two nuts. Or that's not a nut, that's a nut, that's a flange. <laughs> Anyways, and then it just has these two O-rings right here. And so you drill a hole in your oil pan and you stick this through it. You put this, oh, oh there went an O-ring. I'm really uncoordinated tonight and all the time. This O-ring goes on here like this. And I've never used one of these before. Have you used one of these? Like that? No. Okay. And so this goes into the side of the oil pan You've where you put your hole. you all my turbo shenanigans. Oh, true that, true that. <laughs> so it's like this. This goes through the oil pan. And then once you get it inside the oil pan, this goes on the other side of the oil pan. And then you put this on right there. And it sandwiches down on it. Tighten it up. And you tighten it up. And that's supposed to keep oil from spilling out of your oil pan. Whether it does or not. I have no idea, but it should work. totally should work. We're doing it, right? So yeah. it should work. <laughs> if it doesn't, you guys will uh, be the first to know. Yes, indeed. Oil pan's off. Boom. Uh, if you didn't know this, and I didn't know this, like hard body oil pans are super easy to get to. You take all this little cross member out from under it and remove the bolts and it comes right off. Done. Don't forget to drain your oil. You'll, you'll be surprised when you take your oil pan off if you don't drain your oil. Uh, you'll also be surprised. When Check. You listen to this. Water. Listen to this. Y'all hear that? Yeah. What's in there, Bob? Big pieces of plastic, dude. Yep. Timing chain guys. When Ronnie heard it in the bottom of the oil pan, he knew exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, done that. So you think somebody had done the uh, timing chain guides on this before? No, no. You think they're still like all messed up? I mean, up they might have done them because your truck doesn't rattle real loud. No, no, it doesn't. So That's I mean, fine. maybe it's been done before. Maybe, maybe. What else is down in there? Because it's not much. Is that the only piece? No, I don't know. Let me get this old pan. We'll pour it out. Let's see. Oh, it was black. So how many don't change the Really? Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that's quite a bit in there. Oh wrong way. <laughs> oh wow, there is quite a bit in there. My goodness. Look at all that. Yep. Anyway. Just don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. It's just timing chain guides and no big deal. <laughs> yep. No big deal. Normal hard body stuff. Yep. K Normal K stuff. stuff. So that's it. Some chunky stuff. All right, so what we're gonna do now is, this is where the, um, the drain has to go. So we're gonna cut a little section out right here of this baffle. When we did it before, did Paul just put it on top of this part right here? Do you remember? No, it's right in the middle. Here? On my, in no, the no, middle no, here no. or down no, here? No, it's in the middle of that baffle. Oh, okay. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna cut a piece out and try to get it as high as possible. Because what you want when you put it in, you want the oil to be able to drain and fall down into your pan. You don't want it to be down here, like, you don't want it to be down here, like super low, where It'll oil is going to back up, because that's whack. Yeah. You want it to be able to fall into the pan. So you can put it as high as you can in your pan. So this is like, this is the turbo side right here, so this is like the opportune place to put it right here. You, you should be able to cut this out pretty easy with a, a grinder or something, angle grinder which is what we're going to do. We're going to cut it out and we're going to put it right, probably right where the, right where the baffle is. As high as we can. We just don't want this crap to be in the way. Yeah. So It'd be nice if, um, you see the oil pickup runs on this side. It'd be nice if it ran on that side because then you have lots of room here. Yeah. So yeah. you can drill in. And, but it is what it is. You don't complain yeah. about the problems. You just fix them and Move on. Exactly. That's not, what we're doing. Not like it's that big of a problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So, after looking for like 20 minutes for Ronnie's step bit, we found it and we put this hole here. Um, I cut a piece of the baffle off inside 
and I just kind of cleaned up the inside. You want this uh, inside edge and the outside edge to be as flat as possible so um, so it can seal real good. So we're going to clean up this edge right here. There's uh, some metal hanging over right here. We're going to take some sandpaper or a file to it or something and uh, we'll show you all how this goes in in just a second. All right. My uh, oil pan is now appropriately endowed to receive a turbo drain. Um, it goes pipe, o-ring, o-ring, nut. And what we did, we uh, stuck it in there. We put some red Loctite on there because we don't ever plan to take this thing off. Um, and we just snugged it down enough, you know. I don't know how much enough is. It's got a huge freaking nut, so I'm using a crescent wrench. How much torque can you put on something with a crescent wrench? I have no idea. But we got it down like snug enough. So um, we just got to clean the pan out because it's got all these metal shavings in it and we're going to get it back on. Um, do we have a hose that'll fit over this? I don't know. I mean, we don't have any way to clean that anyways, so. Really? We don't have any brake clean or anything? I don't know. Dang, dude. If I did, I would kill the <laughs> wasp nest over there. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. This was like the big deal that we wanted to show on the drain pan, <laughs> yeah. on the oil pan, was this drain right here. This little do-it-yourself drain. This thing was like 15 bucks on freaking Amazon. And you see just a step bit. Yep, we like use a this. big old step bit. And, uh, yeah, and it worked. Done. Done, done. Don't go too big because it'll pull your O-ring <clears throat> through the hole. Don't yeah. go too small because you can't do it if you go too small. Anyways, um, we're going to show you now where to tap the uh, oil feed on the block. Bam. So there we are. Um, there it is right there it's this white thing right here this plug with this wire going to it that is it I'm up under the truck we got the oil pan off or not but uh, that is it if you want to see that um, you just unplug this and you back the uh, back the sensor out and I'm not sure what size that is but um that's where you put the T right there you put a T and then you put the oil feed into the T and then you put the um, sensor in the other side of the T so we're going to see if we have the right size T real quick. We're back. It's a couple seconds later. And I have a new hose. A pressure hose from Turbo. The guy made in Napa. It was not cheap. Ronnie had his made for like 30 bucks, but mine was $80. Um, I don't know what the difference was, but I don't know. If you need it, you need it, right? Mine looks the exact same. Does it really? Yep. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. You had yours made in Douglas, right? Yeah. I don't know how they charge stuff. Maybe he was really nice to you. Maybe he liked you a lot. <laughs> I mean, Jesse usually gives me employee discounts. Oh, really? Yeah. That's super nice. Let's see here. We already have a drain hose on. I just need to get this on so I can see what length to cut it to. This is a little bit longer than three feet. I think he did like four feet on this, just to uh, give me a little extra room. But it should work just fine. So after you drill out your pan, make sure you clean it out with some brake cleaner. Yeah, right on. Get all the metal out of there. Get all the timing guides out of there. <laughs> of which we had quite a few pieces. Yeah, we did some cutting on it too, so there's quite a few metal shards down in here as well. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Should be good to go. Get out. All right. Yeah. Awesome. What are you doing there? I don't know. I got this white goo and I'm putting it on my car parts. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Anyway, when you add all these fittings on here, you're basically opening yourself to new like places where you can get oil leaks. So 
We wanted to use Teflon tape, but AutoZone was out of it, so we're using this. This uh, Permatex thread sealant, which is kind of the same stuff, but it's just in liquid form. And it makes a mess. It's real messy. My goodness. It's not as bad as um, Anisys, but it's up there on the yeah. list. But anyway, it's important that you do this because you could have oil spurting out all kinds of places. Um, That's all high pressure. Do we have this inside here? No, I would put it on the bottom. Here? Yeah. Okay. I would put it on the bottom and then I would tighten this into that, making it tighten this into that and that into the engine. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's why it makes a mess because <laughs> you have butterfingers. <laughs> I have butterfingers. But the pan's on now, right? The pan is on. So the pan's down there. Our little oil return is, let me angle the camera. It's down there, right there. This makes it a lot easier to point at stuff too, man. Does it? Yeah. Nice. Anyways, so that's there. The turbo's over here on the ground right there. We're going to get that on. Um, Bo's doing the oil line right now, getting everything tight, going in here. And we'll get back to you as soon as we get everything kind of like squared up. And hopefully the turbo will be on the next shot. All right, guys. So after two days, um, for no reason, except for needing parts. Absolutely no reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got it done. And everything's kind of mocked up right now. The exhaust isn't hung up, um, but the engine bay is done. Yep, pressure line fit real good. Uh, the drain line fits excellent. I, it just so happened I had a piece of hose that was the perfect length. Um, those little slip-on fittings that we put on the turbo and the, the um, oil, pan. oil pan, perfect. they work excellent. They work perfect, as a matter of fact. Super easy to put on. Um, we've got everything kind of mocked up. We have no gaskets. We have no um, hose clamps right here, um, but we need to do that, and we need to get the uh, the exhaust mounted up, and then we'll just have the wide band and oil and button up the exhaust. Oil and put the exhaust hangers on, and this thing will be running. Um, we could probably knock this out in a day if we wanted to, but uh, we've got one more video to shoot, and that'll in that video. We'll be buttoning everything up, and hopefully we'll have a startup for you guys. A startup and a fat burnout. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> so, next video will be how to install wideband, and this applies to any car. We're going to make it as easy as possible. While we're doing that, we're going to finish up the exhaust because you have to do a little bit of exhaust work when you're doing a wideband, and everything else will just kind of get done off camera. I mean, you guys know how to put gaskets in. You guys know how to put hose clamps on. Yeah. So that's Every, where we're at. Everything else is real simple. Um, at the end of our, at, at the end of this stage, um, we'll go over like everything that we did and exactly how simple it was. Because that's the whole point of the simple turbo series is just to show you how simple it is to tur you know, to get rid of all this like complexity in your mind about turboing anything really. Because I mean, you can do this to anything. I think. Yeah. So. And so I was reading online. And this is interesting thought to me, but it makes sense. And I'm going to tell it to you, and you're going to be like, oh, that totally makes sense. Okay. So this is a math-based, which is mass airflow. So it measures how much air is coming in. Um, whereas, like, my Subaru, because it's not stock, it's map-based, which is manifold absolute pressure or whatever, actual pressure, something yeah, like that. manifold absolute. Um, I read online that math cars you can turbo and run low boost on with no issues because they're measuring exactly how much air is coming in and they're designed to compensate for such things that does make sense i know it makes total that totally sense. makes sense um so we're we're kind of putting that to the test we were already putting that to the test but um now it's kind of now we actually know what we're putting to the test yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um so that's interesting because my truck ran really good on five pounds, almost where you couldn't tell the difference between the SAFC and not the SAFC, right? Like with or without. And that's what we're going to see on this. We had the timing retarded a little bit on Ronnie's truck, but we are going to run stock timing on this right out of the hole. And if we don't get any pinging issues, we might even try to advance the timing just a hair, just to see what happens. 
Um, we are going to try to get um, dyno results on this right here. I need to get my drive shaft problem worked out, which maybe y'all saw on a few videos back. But we're going to try to get that worked out so we can get this thing on the dyno and get dyno results for you guys. If you guys haven't seen the problem, you guys should watch it because it's pretty crazy. We blow up the drive shaft on the dyno. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. Go watch the um, dyno numbers video. That's what it says on the thumbnail, dyno numbers. But that's it for this video. We're done. We got uh, oil pressure and uh, oil drain. Done. Oil feed, done. oil drain. So uh, I guess we'll see y'all later. If you guys have any questions about this stuff, feel free to message us. We're trying to answer everything we can. Right? Yeah. I mean, I hope. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you message us on, on Instagram or email, you might get me, you might get Ronnie, you know, but if, if I don't know something, I'll text him, and if he doesn't know something, he'll text me, which never happens because he knows a lot more than me. I don't know what you buy sometimes. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye, guys.